I'm going to um, perform experiment two today, which is distillation. Distillation is a method for purification of liquids. You can or you can separate liquids that they have different boiling point, um, or you can separate a liquid from a uh, solid. Depends on the difference in the boiling point of components of a mixture. You can use simple distillation or fractional distillation. There are other types of distillations that we are not going to work with to this experiment, experiment two, is like vacuum distillation and steam distillation. For now, we are going to concentrate on the, the two that I talked, simple and fractional um, distillation. Now, the purpose of today's experiment for this experiment is like to learn how to assemble distillation apparatus. And then we are going to perform two experiments, one for simple distillation, in order to calibrate our thermometer, because the chemicals I'm using in simple distillation, one is solid and the other, which very high boiling point, and the other one is volatile compound. So I know that only one compound is going to vapor and is going to go to uh, condense, and I can measure the, the boiling point. Um, I'm using the simple distillation to calibrate the thermometer. When we are talking about distillation, we have a process So, like there are, it involves some process. It's the evaporation and then condensation. In the evaporation, we have like the mixture and the mixture, we, the, if the one of the liquid has lower boiling point, it's going to evaporate first. For simple distillation, I actually chose a liquid plus a solid. The solid compound, it has high boiling point, so it's not going to evaporate. So I know that only the volatile compound would evaporate, and that is going to give us the, um, the proper um, vapor to measure the temperature. So if the temperature is coming from vapor of that single compound, which is my volatile compound, which I'm using methanol today, is going to uh, help me to calibrate the thermometer and make sure how uh, the setting is correct, like the positioning of the thermometer. But let me show you first how to assemble simple distillation. When we do, uh, do assemble distillation, we are going to use a lot of glasswares. These glasswares are stored in the in, in a drawer here. Um, but I'm not going to touch these right now. For now, I'm going to leave everything inside the drawer. First, we are going to follow the diagram that you have in the figure one of the experiment for simple distillation and assemble the, the hardware only. We need two stands for simple distillation. We need the iron ring, and with the, uh, the, the iron ring is used to uh, support the heating mantle. I want to make sure that the, the iron ring is kind of is elevated. So in case I need to stop the heat, Immediately, I can lower this, I can drop it and stop the, um, stop the, the heat, heating process. The heating metal cannot be connected directly to the wall. It has to be connected to a power regulator. So we connect that to the power regulator. I need this connection to the wall for the last step when I want to start my distillation. But just to make sure the system is working, I usually plug in and turn it on, set it at like 60 or 50 and wait for um, heating mantle to, to warm up. And as soon as I see that the temperature is going up, if the system is working, I would stop this and un unplug because I don't want to do everything and figure out that one of these has a shortage, is not working or the fuse is not working. The second stand is going to support the condenser. For the condenser, I always use a three-finger clamp. And if you look at this position for the three-finger clamp, it can be, um, it's adjustable. It has a lot of move movable parts. So I have this uh, changing the angle. And then for the three-finger clamp, I usually tell the students, use the two-finger at the bottom to support 
the uh, to give a better support to condenser this the arm length the length of the clamp can can be um, changed and that's going to be it's going to be flexible enough for you to adjust your uh, glass spheres uh, because in this area when i put my glass spheres i want everything to be straight the condenser has to be with an angle so i have to use this uh, three finger um, clamp I do need a um, utility clamp to support the boiling, boiling flask. So I usually count, I, and I tell the students to count, like make sure you have like seven pieces before you bring out, seven pieces of hardware before you bring out any, any of the glasswares. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, and seven. When I have these seven pieces out, then I'm going to bring the uh, boiling flask. Boiling flask, the size of the boiling flask is provided in the, in the um, laboratory manual, and it should be proper for the size of the heating, heating metal. We do have different sizes of heating metal, different size of the, the glass, uh, the boiling flask, but we are using 100 milliliter, 100 milliliter of this. So both of them are size 100 milliliters. I add four pieces of boiling chips. I don't want to forget adding boiling chips. So I, that's the first thing I do as soon as I take my boiling flask out because it's not going to react and uh, it's okay uh, to keep it in the, in the um, boiling flask. And every time you take a piece of glass, you want to clamp it support it with a clamp and can adjust the height here now you can adjust the height and bring it down place it in the inside the heating metal with a little bit of a distance like space so you don't want to touch it completely but you don't want to keep it too high up because then the heating is not effective next piece is uh, as i said we do have boiling flask we have condenser, and then we have a, a receiving flask. But I need to connect the boiling flask into the um, condenser. For that, we are using a distillation head or three-way adapter. Uh, all glass joints needs to be greased. And the reason we grease the glass joint, there are actually two reasons for that. One, when you are heating pieces of glass that are attached together, as a result of heating, they can stuck together and it's very hard to remove them. If you grease it, you avoid that problem. Second, you want to make sure that there is a good and sealed system because when the vapor is generated, it's going to leave the, from the first opening. You don't want that opening to be here. You want to trap it. You want to make sure that it's going to be transferred to the to the condenser. So we are going to take the condenser and attach to the distillation head. We are using this keg clamps. These are like blue color clamps. That means the ones that we have in this lab is, is blue color. You are going to attach. Every time you attach two pieces of glass, one grease, second secure it. And because it's heavy, we don't want to hold it like that. We are going to, uh, to use the three finger clamp to support the condenser. I want to make sure this side of the glassware is straight up condenser it's with an angle like 45 degree angle would be best because it's going to um, help the gravity is going to help for collection we also attach a um, vacuum adapter for the for the collections of the distillate uh, we are going to have our receiving um, receiving flasks. The receiving, it can be a boiling flask. So I could have a boiling flask here. I could have a beaker. I could have a graduate cylinder. 
So if I'm measuring exactly like five milliliter of the distillate, I would use graduate cylinder. Otherwise, any, any of these receiving containers can be, um, can be used. The last piece that I want to add is a thermometer. Using a thermometer adapter, I'm going to attach the thermometer. Check your thermometer, make sure there is no gap, because if there is gap, that is considered a broken thermometer. So you see the, the ink, it should be like continuous line in the, in the um, thermometer. And you are going to insert to this rubber and don't hold it all the way out because you don't want to, to break it because it's going to uh, crack and break. What you do, you just hold your hand close, hold it closely and twist and push, twist and push until you, know, you have a, uh, the, the adjustment of the height of the thermometer is also very important. And uh, why is important? Because you want the thermometer ball to capture the temperature of, to capture the temperature of the, uh, temperature of the vapor before going to the condenser. You don't want the thermometer to go all the way down because if it goes all the way down, it's going to, you're going to have like mixture of the vapor or maybe it's touching the liquid. You don't want it too far up because the vapor is cooling. Um, it's going to go to lower temperature um, at this area because it's there is because of the distance between the heating source and this area of the glass. So the proper size you do ha also have this in the lab manual. It tells you that it's going to be below the neck of the 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 um, distillation head before the line of the condenser. So it should be at the level of the. Uh, condenser where the vapor is going. So this line right here. Okay, the setup for simple distillation is now complete. I complete the setup, then easily I lower the heating mantle to remove the flask at my chemicals. Because my chemical is, uh, the chemicals that I'm using is volatile liquid. I don't want to leave it in the flask and finish the assembly to avoid any spillage, to avoid evaporation of that before I start collecting. Um, the glassware are, are uh, now, except the, um, the receiving flask, are complete. Now I need to add the water hoses. Water hoses are going to be added or connected to the condenser. We have one, water hose that is going to connect to the faucet for the water coming in from the lower end of the condenser. And we connect that to the faucet. And the water is going to circulate. That's our cooling jacket or condenser that is going to cool the vapor and the vapor is going to condense, change to liquid and we receive the liquid. Now, just keep in mind, condenser has two layers. So if I show you this condenser closer, it might be easier to see. There's like two layers, the inner layer, that's where the vapor passing through. The outer layer is the one that water is, is circulating and is used for um, condensing the vapor. So we want to make sure that the water hoses are attached and is going to cool the uh, cool the vapor. Uh, for the receiving flask, because of this height that we have here, and when the liquid freshly condensed liquid has high temperature, it's not going to be cold. So by the time it reaches to this, it's going to evaporate. To avoid that, we bring the uh, receiving flask closer, and you can support the receiving flask with a um, utility clamp and support it to the ring stand. Now, with adjustable height, you can simply add to here to proper, bring it to the proper level and collect the, 
drops of the liquid based on the, based on the procedure. This assembly is now complete. Before we start uh, the experiment, we want to distillation, actually, before we start the actual distillation, we want to turn on the water. Often the students ask me, how fast should be the, the flow of the water? I say always, like, go gentle, to gentle flow of the water. What happens if you don't open the water, like, if, if it fills up and you close it, then the water gets hot. If you put too much water, uh, the pressure of the water, sometimes too much pressure, it can detach these water hoses and then we get like water splashes in the lab and that is not good. Um, so we want like gentle flow of the water as long as it stays cold and it condenses. At one point, if you see that you have like, you're losing vapor, that means the condensation is not efficient or effective. You lose vapor, you see vapor coming out, that means that the water is getting hot and it, the vapor is not condensing. You can increase the flow of the water or lower the heat using the, um, the voltage adjustment on the power regulator. The power regulator is going to be connected to the wall. When it's connected to the wall, then you are going to turn it on and increase the voltage, you know, based on like 10 units at the time. You can start with like 50 or you can start with 60 and use common sense of gentle boiling. We don't want fast boiling. What happens if you have fast boiling? The liquid, it can start bumping. And if bumping takes place, uh, bumping that like one area of the solution gets hot, then you would like, you can get the liquid jump into the condenser so there is no separation. Uh, too much vapor can generate, your condenser cannot condense all the vapor, you would lose vapor. So you would lower the heat. Gentle boiling, you don't want fast boiling. You also want to make sure that you have boiling chips because if you don't have boiling chips, bumping could take place as well. So you want to avoid bumping all um, together. Now, let's say you put it at the, uh, the adjustment at 50 and wait for like five minutes is not boiling. Then you would increase by 10. You, would, you wait longer, it doesn't boil, you would increase by another 10. And uh, you just want to, when it's boiling, you want to make sure you keep it at gentle boiling. I think I said it three times and I hope that that stays with you. You are looking for gentle flow of water and gentle boiling of the, of the mixture. <laughs>